J Station. Guys. The worst YouTuber of all time. Who the and fuck is J? Who is J Station? I don't know who this is. Um, all right, let's just watch the- I just want to give everybody a huge update. A video I made like six months ago about Digimon cards. <laughs> Check it out. I finally pulled it. I pulled a numbered gold card. He did it. It took six- Digimon? Six months, but he did it. But enough of the good news, okay? That's not what this channel is about. So I've talked about a lot of movies on this channel. And for the most part, even the worst movies I've watched have still been- like a little bit enjoyable at least because I have a theory and I've said this tons of times on my podcast every movie is good okay that is my theory because at the end of the day like no matter I skipped the tr a Sifu trailer I don't care it's not that entertaining it's not that interesting I, I don't want to see like mid kung fu I want to play the game but I don't want to watch the mid kung fu uh trailer shut the fuck up okay this is how it is you like it or you don't no matter how bad a movie is, I still had a nice time watching a movie. I'm not going to be like, well, the cinematography, I don't know. It's a movie. It's fine. But I'm not so sure I feel that way <laughs> anymore because I recently watched a movie uh, called 2025, The World Enslaved by a Virus. And I can confidently say that this is a bad movie. So I found out about this movie through a TikTok that we'll touch on a little later. But how about we read the synopsis for the film? It's 2025. The world as we have known in 2020 does not this exist This seems anymore. incredible. The virus changed This seems like the a greatest world. movie ever made. And communism is all over the place. The global world language developed. Meetings are illegal. Traveling is illegal. And Christianity is illegal. A group of Christians is trying to fight back. Oh my god. Often they make future dystopias, but this one seems like a future utopia. I also really love the sentence, communism is all over the place. Like they're talking about dust in a basement. Ugh, when's the last time you clean in here? There's communism all over the place. <laughs> it's fucking caked in communism. Damn, bitch, you live like this? This 2025 movie came out this month on Amazon Prime. So when I saw that, I was like, okay, so this is a legitimate movie, right? If, Watch it's, party. if it's able to be on, like Watch a, party. on one of the main streaming services, right? And then I did a little bit of research and I found out that pretty much anybody can just upload a movie to Amazon this is true. for free. So never mind. And after a little bit more research, I found out that the director and star of this movie is just a, a, a YouTuber. He's a Christian YouTuber. Well, I mean, according to him, he's a number one best-selling director, but I don't really know where he got that title from because he only has one IMDb credit and it's this movie. So maybe he's like the number one best-selling director of this movie, which I mean, I guess he's right, but I would just love to talk about <laughs> this movie today because it is genuinely the worst movie I have ever seen in my life. And that's saying a lot. Okay, that's coming from a guy who really didn't mind the first Suicide Squad. So without further ado, Let's talk about 2025, The World Enslaved Oh God, Biovirus. that's terrible. The movie starts with an epic car chase uh, with the main character, Roy. He's driving away from the police who are trying to shoot him and kill him. But when they finally catch up to him, for some reason, they decide to just arrest him instead. And we got this great scene right here where <laughs> he slides across the hood of a car to just get arrested on... Future Utopia is already based. Communism has been implemented and police actually de-escalate. This is crazy. Also, love that, love that he couldn't even find a fucking decommissioned Crown Vic for this, okay? That's very cool. The brain rot. Like, he could not find a decommissioned Crown Vic, at, at the very least. Or like a Ford Focus, or whatever the fuck cops use now. On the other side. And dude, that is so funny, sliding across the hood of a car to just get arrested. Oh, he's German, that's like, that's never like mind, I just realized. like doing a double backflip into a pool of your dad's piss. Like, the first part was cool, but... Second part was kind of lame. Why does your dad even have that? How old is that pool? How long has he been filling up that pool? You know what I mean? Bruh. Now he's getting interrogated by this policeman because Roy's got a Bible, okay? And that shit's illegal. It's not allowed. They are from a time when life was different. The time when we could meet our friends, go to restaurants, celebrate whatever and whenever we wanted to. What? Why does Seer in this movie? What is going on right now? When did Seer film this? Why does he have such an incredible uh, German accent? I have so many questions right now about this. Also, 
I love when like European filmmakers, I'm using the term filmmaker loosely here. They they want to do like an American movie, so they're wearing like a police chest, but they're still a police vest, but like they're still very clearly just German. <laughs> <laughs> they also never say outright that it's COVID-19 in this movie, but it's heavily implied because it started in 2020 and it stopped like large social gatherings from happening. The state leaders came up with new regulations to repress the people and secure their power. The state leaders started to take away our rights and our freedom. Their excuse was virus, something they sold us as a super deadly killer virus. Something they sold us as a super deadly killer virus. Huh. Five and a half million people died so far, but you're upset that you can't go to a restaurant? Doesn't seem very godly, Roy. What would Jesus do? I, I, don't, I don't know, but I can tell you he wouldn't make this fucking movie. And I'm just giving you guys the main points he makes in this scene. Like, this whole part is like five minutes of uninterrupted fucking exposition and him just complaining that you can't go to restaurants anymore because of COVID. If everyone would start thinking like that, we could really achieve something big. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna start a sin tally for this guy. As the movie goes on, we'll tally up all the sins that this guy uh, commits, and we'll see how many he's got by the end of the movie. So far, we've got resisting arrest. I don't know, to a Christian, I feel like that could be a sin. You know, it is a crime. And also, he just, like, undermined millions of deaths, so. That's two so far. Not looking good. So now we flash back to three months ago. Roy is hanging out with his sister, Hannah. Uh, then their other friend barges in with some bad news about Jack. Arrested tortured and killed but wait who's jack he was a friend a brother oh okay damn she's hot also and killed but wait who's jack he was a also gotta point out something here kind of doesn't make sense that they're fucking killing the entire purpose is to you know protect them from covid but Let's continue. A friend, a brother. Oh, okay. Thank you, Hannah. So this friend, and I'm sorry, I don't remember his name or no, I don't think they ever fucking say it in this movie. And even if they did, I just wasn't paying attention because this movie is so boring. So we'll just call him Friendo. Friendo Baggins. How about that? Friendo Baggins, he comes over and he's like, you guys got to stop being Christian. Okay. Every, everyone's dying. You know, they're getting murdered for being Christian and you guys are my best friends. I don't want you guys to die. So please stop being Christian. But they say no. So he quits their little like Christian rebellion group. Sorry, but I'm out. I gotta quit. And that really upsets them. Stop! Because like the synopsis says, being <laughs> Christian is illegal. So being Christian is a crime. I love you, baby. And like crime yeah, is my next video. sinful. Yeah, Therefore, the act of being a Christian is a sin. So let's add one. Sorry, Roy. So Roy and Hannah decide that they need to go out and find more Christians because there's just no Christians left in the world. We're the only Christians left in the world. Because if you guys didn't know, one of the most common symptoms of COVID isn't a loss of taste. It's a loss of faith. In the eyes oh. So that's what they do. They go out to find uh, more Christians. And they do this by just randomly spray painting a bunch of fish symbols just around their city. If you didn't know, Christians used this symbol uh, to like sh secretly show other people that they like fucked with God. You know, back when Christians faced persecution in the Roman Empire, but there were like less people back then, right? You're not even put like a phone number or a website, a fucking QR code. How th like, what's that gonna do? Someone's gonna walk by and see a fish and be like, oh, a fish. All right. <laughs> and you know what? I'm gonna have to add another sin. Graffiti, really? I don't think Jesus would have liked that. Also, while we're on the topic of sinning, I feel like I need to talk about the TikTok that I mentioned earlier in the video. Let's just watch it. This is Joshua, I believe it's 29 as of right now, wishing his girlfriend a happy 18th birthday. And it just keeps getting worse because in the caption he says, you have been my best friend for four years. When did you start dating her? When she was 14? This was posted in November of 2020. So he was maybe 27 at the time. And then a month later, he proposes to his child bride. That's not a sin. Straight up. All of those words are in the Bible. Sorry. A lot of you motherfuckers out here say none of those words are in the Bible. Very fucked up. Not sinful.
Not to be a fucking uh, weirdo uh, semantic Zandy about this. Technically, all of those words are very much in the Bible. Okay. Are you kidding me? If you're not fucking grooming 14 year olds, are you even Christian? Okay. Like, are you even like, are, you're not, you're just like a fake Christian. Okay. You're like, you're like, oh yeah, look at me. I'm Protestant. Like, uh, okay. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. How many times have you done pedophilia? Excuse me. Like the only real Christians in the, in the universe for these people are like the latter day saints. Okay. The fundamentalists. Oh, look at me. I, I love God. I'm a Protestant. Like, get the fuck out of here, bro. Sorry. Anyway, that was, uh, I digress. Yeah. And I looked at some of his YouTube videos where I stumbled upon a music video of his called As a Couple We Worship. And literally all the recent comments are just calling him a perv and a groomer and stuff. Like, it's pretty gnarly. And what's worse than that, okay, well, it's not, it's not worse than like being a groomer, but it's, it, the song fucking sucks. Okay. The song is so bad. <laughs> And I try to do some more research to find I just don't understand like he so he has like no tangible like skill. He's just like he's not good at singing. I guess we already we already recognize that he's good at God. He, he's good at Godding. You know, child bride and all. Uh, this guy's actual age, but crazy. His Instagram is now private. You know, some people say 29. Some other people are saying 24. But like, it doesn't matter really. If, if either of those are true, like it doesn't matter. Because hey man, starting an Instagram caption about your girlfriend with finally 18 and then proposing a month after. Ew. Okay, give it up for the bride and groomer. Also, it's very interesting that he would make an entire movie about going against the rules and laws that the government put in place that stop him from doing the things that he wants to do, right? Hmm. Hmm. So let's go ahead and add a uh, 100 sins to the tally for that one. Nope, and wrong, hey, now not sinful. Wrong, wrong again. Knew he was gonna say that, not sinful, dude. One, libertarian Bible, okay? Actually, you get extra points. You literally get extra points for 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 being a, a pedophile uh, under libertarian Bible. So that's number one. So definitely wrong on that front. Child brides are like literally ninety percent of why people become libertarian. I think like that's just or, or they just can't shut the fuck up about it. And we don't have to feel bad about making fun of this fucking terrible movie. So let's keep going. There's a long montage of them spray painting fish all over the place until they are rudely interrupted by a cop shooting Hannah in the arm. I don't know how the cop found them. I guess his Christian sense was tingling. But luckily, you know what's really funny about this? Like, like EU cops would never do this. You know what I mean? This guy is an Amerabu, 100%. Like, why is he an Amerabu? He's in Germany, and he's not fucking covering this from, like, a German point of view. They got vests that say police on them, okay? Why is it that, like, our, oh, God, our cultural export is so fucking annoying? I, I really do hate that, like, we make... Like, I'm, I'm a very unique Amirabu, you know what I mean? I, I saw all the cool shit of America, and then I came here, and I was like, oh, this sucks. Like, I was wrong, you know what I mean? I was totally fucking was blinded right but most Ameribus are like this they're, they're just like oh yeah i love to be as an american libertarian yeah very good pedophilia no 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 what do you mean pedophilia actually it's called hebophilia very and it's very normal and and you know and schuldigung i like that uh i like that a lot it just fucking sucks most of the Ameribus are like this okay around the rest of the world. A random guy comes up behind the cop and knocks him out. I also want to <laughs> add that Roy just- He has, look, 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 this fucking guy has an American uh, mask on. A random guy comes up behind the cop and knocks him out. I also want to add that Roy just straight up ditched Hannah as she got shot. She got fucking shot and he just like booked it. He ran away. So yeah, we'll add a sin in there as well. That was one of the 10 commandments. Thou shall not- 
bail on your sis when she gets shot. What's your name? Hannah. Where were you born, Hannah? Yo, take the mask off. She can't breathe. What the fuck? Take the mask off, homie. She's gonna fucking die, brother. It's not the bullet hole that's killing her. It's not the COVID 2025 or whatever the fuck this movie is supposed to be at. It's the mask. She can't breathe. She got, you don't have that O2, brother. Where are you born? Where are you born? <laughs> Where are you born? Where were you born? Where were you born? It's your sign, huh? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yes, Curtis. What would you like? Uh, sorry, not you, man. Oh, my sincerest apologies. It's okay. Hey. That guy's wife is too young. I know. Seriously, though, why was he being so aggressive about where she was born? That was a fucking mad. She just got shot. Bring her to a hospital, man. Ouch, I've been shot. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll help you. Oh, my God. Thank you. Where were you born? What? Where were you born? Just why tell does me. It matter? Tell me where you were born. I need to know. It doesn't matter. I where did your life start? Die. Where were you born? Yeah. I need to know. Okay, okay I was where? born in where New Jersey. Oh, ew. Wait, is that true? Wait. Was Curtis actually born in New Jersey? Why did I think he was Canadian? Oh God, this is the worst thing I've ever found out about him. You two, Hassan, shut the fuck up! Shut up! That's not true! Just what it says on my birth certificate. Fuck you! I can't change where I was born. New Jersey. Where are you going? I you would, said you were. I would do this too. Born in New Jersey. Yeah. My dad was born in New Jersey. Okay. You're not my dad. <laughs> like the vine. <laughs> yeah, like the vine. Anyways, good luck with your bullet wounds, man. What do you mean wounds? I only. I mean, honestly, like I would, I would walk away if someone was shot, and I asked them, I have it asked them, like, where were you born? Okay, and they said New Jersey. I'd probably walk away too have one oh! <laughs> back to the movie they all get back to their secret christian base where hannah's bullet wound is already magically healed shout out jesus for that one i guess and this is where we meet this guy i don't know his name because i don't think they ever fucking say it in this movie so we'll just call him guy guy found them because he saw all the fish symbols everywhere so i guess their plan fucking works somehow so they got one more christian bro homie is so such a fucking nerd, dude. Look at this guy. Like, oh god, this is the good guy. This is supposed to be a good guy. He look first of all, he just automatically looks like a villain. I'm sorry. Maybe I watched too many fucking American movies where like the Nazis are the bad guys and stuff. But immediately when I see like a blonde, blue-eyed guy, it's just with the fucking undercut, I'm like, that's I will never trust this person. This is an untrustworthy person. He just literally looks like the bad guy in every movie. And not just like serious movies, but I'm talking like America really did that. Like they in the 90s, if you watch like a comedy, the, the bully was this guy. You know what I mean? Like this guy is the, the bully in like every fucking franchise. Symbols everywhere, so I guess their plan fucking works somehow. So they got one more Christian added to their team. And uh, let's see what their big plan is. Now our plan is we just spray fish. Maybe find a better plan, but that's a plan for now. Let's go spray. That's it? That's your plan? Your plan sucks, dude. Oh yeah, we are just going to spray the fish everywhere. And then, you know, maybe you can come and, and save us, you know? And also, are you reading the cue cards? More fish. That's amazing. Let's do it. Nice, man. Just spray fish and hope for the best. Because it worked so well last time. And you'd think the scene ends right here, right? Seems like a perfect... <laughs> Someone says, Is that Karl Rittenhausen? Yeah! Jawohl! That is Karl Rittenhausen! Is that good? Normal time to end a scene. No. That's amazing. Let's do it. Thanks. <laughs> I'm looking for some new... Sprays because I think we forgot them where we went. Then I think that this was just like a real conversation. Like I think, dude, how are you so bad at writing anything, dude? 
Yo, I need to watch this movie now. Like, I don't know why Curtis did this. I don't know why he did this. Well, did he want us to watch this movie? Because I'm gonna fucking watch this movie now. It just makes me want to watch the movie more. Yeah, take a look at that. All right, yes. cool. Why did this? Did this guy fucking upload this to YouTube too? Like, or did he just keep it on Amazon Prime only? Because that's really stupid. Why leave that in? Even fucking guy was like, well, there's no way this is going to be left in the movie because this was nothing at all. So I'm going to look right down the fucking barrel of this lens. <laughs> and dude, there are so many scenes like this in the movie. Like literally 80% of this movie are the characters just sitting around talking. Like just chatting about God like they're at Bible camp or something. And honestly, man, it's sentences like, I'm looking for some new sprays because I think we forgot them. That make me think that they just fucking made up the plot as they went along. I mean, which is probably what they did when they wrote the Bible, but still, okay, it's lazy. It's just straight up lazy. Wait, it's on YouTube, bro, stop. Stop. Wait a minute, they made fucking, dude, this entire movie. They made a, a, a an hour and 30, how'd they fill up an hour and 31 minutes, dude? Yo, we have to watch this. I have to watch this now. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Carl Rittenhausen. Thank you, Wesley Brothers, Bruder, Bruder Wesley. And most importantly, thank you, Curtis Corner. Thank you so much, Curtis Corner. This is a very good, very Easy, good. Okay, good. and that's not a very good example that you're setting for your it's wife. It's so good! She's young and impressionable. But anyways, Hannah and Guy keep chatting, and this is where we really learn a I lot about these characters with some hard-hitting dialogue. Do you live around here, or where do you live? I live actually like, like 20 minutes. I don't even know where this place is. Jesus Christ, man. So now we meet this other character named Layla. It was actually played by Roy's real life wife, I think. We meet this character at her house where she pours way too much milk into her cereal bowl and opens a letter from her mom that says, please don't risk your life for people you don't know. You mean too much to me. Love, mom. Mom. Nobody, that is so Euro, that is so Euro cucked. M-U-M. No American has ever wrote, me mom. This person found like the only, only fucking uh, English speaker in the region who happened to be British, okay? It's your fucking mum, yeah? Don't risk your life. Save your funny. Protect your fucking funny. Don't do it. Don't risk your fucking life, bruv. Her mom wrote that mom. letter because Layla actually works for the anti-Christian government. I'm not quite sure what she does there. I'm going to be honest, this entire part of the whole plot is very confusing because the only thing that happens in her day of work is some guy will walk up and go, uh, here are the cases for today. Those are the latest cases. Okay, I will bring it to the masses, Arjun. Cool, sounds good. And I assume they're like COVID cases, I guess. But when she opens up the... F Wait. I will bring it to the masses, yeah. <laughs> Folder. It literally just looks like a bunch of first names typed out into Microsoft Word. So I guess in this world, the way they post COVID cases, they just post a huge list of, of just first names. You learn British English in school? Yeah, I know, dude. I grew up in fucking Turkey. I learned British English as well. And if your name is on there, you go, oh, well, I guess that's for me. Same as if you walk by a, a spray painted fish on the wall, you're like, oh, I guess that's for me. Honestly, on second thought, if if that's how they displayed COVID cases, I, I, I feel like we'd be better off. Because like numbers, wait, what are those? Do you imagine seeing your own name on there? I can't be the only one who thinks uh, Curtis is, is uh, nose ring makes it look like he's got a booger. Also, I feel like that nose ring would make it a lot harder to pick your boogers, which, you know. Or maybe easier. I don't know. Is there like a is there like a separate vent in there that you can pick your boogers through? Is that like a separate entry point? You can like really get all the back get all back up in there. Has anyone ever picked their boogers from their nose hole? Or like when you blow your nose, hassle, hassle, it's like a it's like hassle, a whale. Hassle, 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 hassle. And it just like comes out like a little piece of booger comes out and like hits you in the eye. Yeah, nose vent. Exactly. <sighs> oh, 
Why is my streamer so rude and so filled with brain rot? Sometimes boogers attach onto the nose ring. You can pull them off without ripping hair out. I have a nose ring. It's fine. You psycho. No, nose rings are fucking dope. You guys know I love septum rings, especially. <laughs> yeah, what if you, you just smush your nose and blow real hard? It comes out of the hole like a noodle. You just close both of your nose. You, you close both of your nostrils. And then you blow at it, and it's just like... Beep. <laughs> it's like those it's like that thing the, the the funny thing that you blow on is <laughs> oh dude it's not spaghetti reasons to hate german oh okay let's continue yeah. That'd be crazy, right? Because people usually don't care until it like happens to them, you know? But anyways, Leela actually steals the list of cases. I'm just, by the way, I have no, like, uh, I'm not saying any of this to, to joke about this, okay? Uh, I just think it'd be very cool if that was a, a thing that you could do. Empty, and then this happens. Are those the latest cases? Yes. Bro, that is the weirdest way to hold a person. Okay, look Leaves at the this. the folder empty, and then this happens. Are those the latest like he did the he did the phantom hand like he just did the ghost hand or whatever the fuck is called but also at the same time the grip is that of a of a violent man you know what i mean One point i don't know maybe i'm nitpicking but like it does feel very strange this cases yes everything in there excellent i'll give them to sergeant lucinda my daughter she'll take care of it but hold oh that's the only american that's a real, that's an American. Finally, dude. Okay, let's just recap what just happened at her job. Some guy left the latest COVID cases in a folder on her desk for her to relay to the masses. I think that's what she said. And it was on her desk for about 34 seconds. I counted. Then some other guy comes up and is like, oh, at least the today's cases? Let me bring to my daughter, Lucinda. I'm sure you've had time to copy all these first names, all these hundreds of thousands of first names and relay them to the masses, right? Like what kind of fucking office are you running here? This seems so unorganized. And this is also the perfect time to talk about the editing in this movie because oh my God, the well, I'm out, the only fat person is American. First of all, there needs to be more fat people. So that's like that's realism if they're in America. So she looks like the innocent wife of the Nazi in American movies. KW editing in this movie. Let's watch this scene right after he took the fucking en empty envelope off, off the desk. And that's another thing. Wouldn't he know? Wouldn't he feel that this? He was just holding an empty Manila folder. Sorry, I'm nitpicking. I'm gonna show you this scene unedited. This is this is how they chose to leave it in the movie. Pre-watch, we're both nitpicking. Oh my God, are you serious? No shot. Bro, if they let you have a fucking man bun while you're in your military uniform, that army is just, you're going, the army is gonna fucking fail, okay? Sorry. Percent plus Curtis Hassel. So he was there. He was there. The screen went black for no reason, and then he was gone. The fuck happened? Did he get fucking kidnapped by a ninja, and then no one cared? <laughs> I just don't know how Dude. movies like this, like, just get made and are allowed to be made. Sorry. <laughs> Got kidnapped by a ninja. He was really nice, though. He had, like, a appropriately aged wife who was great okay, so now we cut to a cool scene of roy hannah and guy now they're out uh just spraying more fish again second time's a charm that's the thing about spraying fish making it stinky all right what did corona do to jesus no. nothing <laughs> dude man i didn't even I was going to watch this movie, but after that, I don't think I can. I don't think we can do that.
an honest review of this movie from a hog. Haters of Jesus hate this film. Surprising? No. Spoiler alert! I will give kudos to the writers and producers of this film. One person. You're giving kudo. You're giving one kudo, not multiple kudos, because there's only one person that made this entire thing happen. Okay. I will give a kudo to the writer and producer of this film. The singular kudo. <laughs> I crack myself up, dude. I'm literally the dumbest person on this platform. People are like, oh, that's the guy that talks about news and they think I'm smart, but like, I'm so stupid. Anyway, <laughs> at least, <laughs> at least I make myself happy. Okay. First of all, I don't know how in the world they were able to get this movie out so quickly. <laughs> yeah, I wonder how. It normally takes a film, especially a low budget film, years just to edit. Anyhow, I thought the acting, though, sometimes a little stilted, <laughs> was not bad. This is not a fucking, this is not like a normal hog, dude. No normal hog says stilted. And the idea shared, this is, this is letterbox. This is probably Will Menneker's letterbox. Okay, we got him. This is the theater. Okay, you know what this is? This is like the in the closet theater kid hog that if he like grew up in different circumstances, he probably would be like a very happy gay man who enjoys cinema. Okay. And like, no, no fucking hog is like the, the, the acting though. Sometimes a little stilted was not bad. And the ideas shared in the film were very good. Anyway. Clearly, it takes a Christian or someone truly interested in Jesus to really enjoy this film. As Jesus said, when we walked the earth, he did not come to bring peace to the world. And in this footnote from Matthew 10, 34 in the Geneva Bible, it says, man, this guy's such a fucking Bible nerd. Oh, my God, dude. Like, he's like, oh, dude, I got the original, bro. I got the fucking. <laughs> I got the alpha version of the Bible, the Geneva Bible from 1599. Ugh. Ew, dude. It's got some real different footnotes in it. I'm a fan of that one. Okay. Civil dissensions follow the preaching of the gospel. If this is not as true today as it ever was, we are well on our way. There is a palpable hatred, capital hatred, toward Jesus and therefore toward those who follow him in the world today and in this film. The Bible also warned us of the top of the hour ad break. The unfaithful Jebediahs that would tell you about the top of the hour ad break without telling you that there's a, there's a way to avoid the ads. Way to avoid such ads would be by subscribing for $5 American currency minted. Okay. Greenbacks, baby. Or for free if you don't have $5 with a Twitch Prime. By connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account, the Geneva Bible tells you you will be able to no longer see the ads. Send me links if you want to. You know, fund the, the second Porsche fund. Here's the one minute ad break now, you unfaithful Jebediahs. All of those words are in the Bible. I don't need a sub. My faith in Jesus prevents the ads. Oh, I didn't know your faith in Jesus was called ad block or a VPN, which I'm not advocating for. Of course, I would never do that. I'm just simply making a joke. about what this person's faith in Jesus is like. Ethan, exactly. I found the film thought provoking. It's not a perfect film, but a very good one. I might've passed it by and had, I had not noticed the one out of 1.3 out of five start rating on Amazon. I figured anything the majority hates that much is either a really, really bad or b very Christian. 
And in this case, it was B. Very Christian. Well done. It is curious to me that this film is set in Germany, but is enacted in English, except for that one short bit where English subtitles let us know what is said, what is being said in German. I find myself very curious as to the story behind the making of this film. Yeah, it's only it's only Christians, dude. That is just it's either very bad or very Christian. Even though he did say it was very bad. I didn't even think about this, but youth pastors, they must be having a fucking field day with all this COVID shit. Oh my God. You know, guys, you really can't socially distance yourself from our Lord and Savior. And listen, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I don't need the vaccine, right? I have all the antibodies I need. The, the body, body of Christ? Christ. I flipped my chair it's around for stuff. that bit. So I could lean on it like a cool guy, but you can't, you can't even notice in the frame, which is cool. That's embarrassing. Okay, so now we know that it is COVID that they're referencing in this movie. So at the very least, that terrible joke actually gave us some exposition that was needed. We then cut to a super cool scene of this hacker who's trying to track down the Christians and they're doing some epic Bible research. And I gotta say, as bad as this movie is, this is the first time I've seen anything like this. A fucking Bible research montage with house music playing in the background? Let's fucking go, dude. That's hilarious. I honestly, honestly wish I thought of that first. Okay, now we cut to the gang sleeping at their secret base when we hear a knock at the door. Who's that? Are you a traitor? Did you sell us out? What? Yeah, that's what I say to Jenna whenever someone knocks on our door too. Are you a traitor? But Guy isn't a traitor. He wouldn't do that, okay? Traitor, I hardly know her. The person at the door was the hacker. I am um, what you might call a hacker. Hacker, I hardly know her. I can't stop. <laughs> I am what you might call a hacker. Murat's texting me. Oh my God! Murat's texting me updates from the NASCAR. Can Scottish people be called Imans? Murat's texting me updates from NASCAR. He says you're missing it. The track is three feet long, and they keep crashing every two laps. Oh my God! Oh, they're doing it in at the Rose Bowl. Is that what they're doing it in? Like, check has wicked. Oh, dude, of course. And he said, and no butthole in sight. At the LA Coliseum? And she wants to help them out with their cause. I want to help. And this next scene is fucking hilarious. It's yet another scene where the characters just sit in a circle and fumble through a conversation about Jesus. But there are some great lines of dialogue in this part. And I would, I would like to show you one that has been burned in my brain ever since I heard it. Well, then we got to find these Christians. So I can do that. I can get all the phone numbers of the Christians if I hack the police. I can get all the phone numbers of the Christians if I hack the police. I can get all the phone numbers of the Christians if I hack the police. <laughs> that might be the funniest line of dialogue that I've ever heard in my life. Like, I'm just picturing... Their What's funny about that? She's helpful. She's being helpful. I don't understand. She's just being incredibly helpful as a hacker. Wow. Messed up. There's like a huge safe at a police station that's just full of Christian phone numbers. <laughs> yeah, no, Why that's, that's them, exactly. Right? Yeah, no, that's. It is how it's stored. That's. 
That's how it's stored in the in the real world and in the movie. Did you ever need those? The gang is not laughing like I am. They're actually pretty excited about this whole idea. I am too. It's a game changer. And honestly, dude, conspiring with a hacker, planning on stealing information from the police. Let's add a couple sins for that. I'm sorry. And another thing about the editing in this movie, the music is so fucking loud all the time. Can the police find those invitations that we're gonna send? Oh wow, when Christopher Nolan does it, it's revolutionary. But when uh fucking pedo German libertarian Amerabu uh, Christian guy does it, it's like, oh, that's fucked up. That's bad sound editing. Yeah, that's cool. All the tenant frogs in the chat lit up. They're like, oh my god. Wow, another movie that I can't even comprehend the dialogue in because the audio is so fucking loud and not synchronized appropriately. Wow. That's a 10 out of 10. You're just too stupid not to enjoy it. You didn't understand it. You're just too dumb. So if I do what? right, they won't know this. you saying? I guess their theory is like, it doesn't matter how bad the dialogue is if you can't hear the dialogue over the loud inspirational music. And it works, man. It honestly fucking works, okay? I'm feeling inspired. I'm feeling very inspired to fucking engage in... Violent, Violent devil, devil worship. worship. This movie is driving me to Satanism. You guys are having the opposite effect. Good job. We now cut back to Layla who sneaks into a control room at the government headquarters and snoops around the computer where she finds a Word document about a Christian conspiracy. And I pause it on this frame so we can- Yeah, you're right. I shouldn't have said uh, synchronizer. I should have said equalizer. A Word document about a- Yeah, not enough information yet. All we know is that they're starting in the city, unknown leader, why the overthrow the peaceful society that we have, how, we have no idea how they're doing this, but they somehow, who, see attached. Bro, he gave up. He gave up, but they somehow, and the, a Christian conspiracy, and the type thing is still there. It's a word doc. And he literally, he, he stopped. He fucking, he didn't even, he kept typing. Conspiracy, and I pause it on this frame so we could uh, we could read it really quick. <laughs> Christian conspiracy. Is this what government documents look like? I don't think the U.S. government budget had fucking word art at the top. Christian conspiracy. Where? Not enough information yet. All we know is that they are starting to gather in groups in the city. Unknown leader. Why? To overthrow the peaceful society that we have. <laughs> That's the word pad. It's not even word. Oh my lord. COVID content boring. What? How? We have no idea how they are doing this, but they somehow, who? See attached. Like, it's literally like someone's being quizzed on it. <laughs> There's also another document that they show on screen for a second that I want to look at as well. It's very blurry, but you can make out the title. It just says possible Christian names. Just like the COVID cases, it's just a list of first names, it looks like. For all we know, this list could belong to, like, a pregnant woman. Dude, it just, like, it feels like they're, they, they made this, like, like, the stupidest person on the planet made this. Like, why, like, did his uh, emotional and mental development stunt at some point in his life after, like, traumatic experiences? Because... He, he just like, I don't understand. Like, how can you be like an actual, how can you be like an actual adult? Okay. And be like, this is the movie I'm going to make. And then you don't even put like actual names, like full names, just write out full names. Why? He just wrote the first names. Why wouldn't he write full names? Who's just going through pop report this movie to Vares? Yeah. <laughs> it's like I have uh my my German friend, my German best friend, um, he, he got the vaccine and then he thought uh, he could make the the next talent tenant, uh the Christopher Nolan flick. 
Uh, and uh, it's somehow worse than anything Nolan has ever made. Surprisingly. Possible Christian names for her baby? We don't know. But Layla with her big brain must just be a deletes vaccine all injury. the possible Christian names. Take that, pregnant government employee. <laughs> now we cut to another fucking montage. This one features Roy traveling across the world to give speeches to huge crowds of people in order to convert them to Christianity. But the freedom... But he doesn't have any fucking friends, so he couldn't get huge crowds. Also, he has like different. Taj. This one. Fe that those glasses, like I wear those. I love those glasses. That's just straight up like. He's doing the look at all my friends. They're having fun. Just, uh, you know, away from the camera where you can't see them. He, that's what the meme he's doing. Okay. And those are, if you're Christian and you wear those glasses, you're fucking straight up a cult leader. Features Roy traveling across the world. Luckily for him, though, he doesn't have any friends to even build a cult. You know what I mean? He gives speeches to huge crowds of people in order to convert them to Christianity. But the freedom that was taken from us. And the amount of people they got for these scenes is honestly pretty impressive. I don't know how they did it, but like, there's gotta be like four people in that crowd at least. And I know this movie doesn't have a big budget, but I don't know, you could have used the money that you spent on your engagement ring for your 18 year old wife on some extras. Just a thought. And this next part is really confusing because it cuts immediately from that montage to, believe it or not, another montage of Roy walking with Leela, who was at one of the speeches, Seven I guess. Because I, I guess Leela is like a secret Christian and wants to help time. them from like in, from inside the government. The so Roy and Leela are walking around, the laughing and flirting. Uh, he shoves her. And while this is happening, we see shots of the earth turning red, slowly turning red. I'm guessing it's like a, like a wave of Christianity. Wait, communism? There's a spirit, dude, that's haunting Europe? Is that what it is? So Christianity is now spreading through the Earth's population, much like a highly contagious virus. That's actually one of the main symptoms in the, the new variant. It's Christianity. You actually become a Christian. But I guess instead of COVID-19, it's COVID-18. Finally. I also am going to add a sin uh, for pushing a woman. And dude, this next scene... It's fucking weird as shit as well. Also not a sin. Striking your wife? Goaded. So Roy's for other random for Christianity. Friends and religion in general. By, and he says that his entire family was arrested for being Christian and they're about to be executed. And then Roy says this. And we need to fight on and we need to actually be happy for the people that are now gonna go to heaven. They made it. If I told my good friend that my family was just kidnapped and they're about to be killed and I and I and I couldn't do anything about it, and he was like, you should be happy for them. They're going to heaven. Dude, I would toss them into a pool of my dad's piss. Like fuck you, man. And dude, that's not even the worst of it. We actually got some new stuff here. I think you got the Bible DVDs and the Bible study DVDs. That we got some worship night DVDs. Like such a dickhead. Yeah, sorry your whole family's about to die, but Got this new heat, bro. Fucking straight out the stew. It's actually fire. Fucking brand new Bible shit. She bumps. <laughs> this screenshot is honestly like a genuinely amazing, unintentional critique of Christianity. Somebody fucking crying and like sad. Their life is falling apart. They just need someone to help them and uplift them and make them feel better. And then there's this super religious guy beside them being like, Yo. I do love that like he's still working with DVDs. Like what's, what do you got a Pentium for? How are you going to watch the DVDs? Like nowadays, if someone was like, yo, here, check these DVDs out. I'm like, how will I watch this DVD? Let me dust off the old PlayStation 3 so I can fucking watch the DVD. You know what I mean? Like what, what is it? It's in the future and you're, you have DVD players. What's going on in the future? Do they even have fucking DVDs in... Oh, my PlayStation 5 could technically play it. Yeah, that's true. I did get I did get a paperweight that has a DVD-ROM in it. Yo, here's a DVD, dude. Follow whatever they say on there, and you'll get to heaven and see your family again. <laughs> Most of the PlayStations that were sold aren't. They don't even have DVD players. They don't have any players at all. That'll be 10 bucks, by the way. And I'm not saying all churches okay, and I'll be, pastors I'll be back in a are second. hungry, but I'm sure there's a few. He made that airplane so cheap for me, I couldn't help it. <laughs> 
Okay, now we cut to the government building uh, where the sergeant is giving a Neil Breen-esque monologue. Unite thoughts, unite currency, language, and values. And we get another montage. This one features the government uh, breaking up all the Christian groups who are out in the field singing their Christian songs. And honestly, dude, if cops did this more often, I feel like less people would hate them. I'll go on record and say it should be illegal to play an acoustic guitar around a campfire, okay? I fucking hate that shit. And if you're singing too, you deserve a life sentence, okay? No, longer, longer than a life sentence. A life, life, a life paragraph, how about that? All right, break it up, break it up. This song fucking sucks. We're almost at the end of the movie, trust me. So back at the government headquarters, we get another weird, pointless, Neil Breen-esque monologue from the sergeant. These are antiques. These are the things that are made of history. Is he drunk? Why is he talking like that? These are what holds people's dreams. These represent the Christians that I killed. <laughs> Go talk to the uh, Minister of Propaganda. <laughs> okay, hold on. Go talk to the uh, Minister of Propaganda. One more time. Minister of Propaganda. 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 I would hate to see what impropaganda looks like, you know what I mean? Come on. Hey, next there's a... A quick scene where they convert the hacker to Christianity. They fucking hack into her brain with Jesus. Then there's a really funny scene where they just acquired 100,000 new Christians in Asia. We've reached the 100,000 people goal in Asia. So they plan to get a bunch of DVDs to them. Those are the ones that we should bring to Asia. Yeah, I'm sure those 30 DVDs will be enough for the billions of people who live in Asia. Good job, guys. Oh, so yeah. this next scene, Friendo Baggins from earlier, he shows up and says the same thing from earlier in the movie. He's like, you guys gotta stop being Christian. Please stop being Christian. You guys are gonna get hurt. But they tell him, they're not gonna stop, so he leaves all pissed off. Don't say it anymore, you guys. Then they do some Twitch stream to spread the word of God, and while this happens, the government is absolutely freaking out because they can't find any of the Christians. They just can't track them down. Even though there is literally just an entire montage of the government tracking down the Christians and breaking up their fucking acoustic guitar party. So I don't, so I don't really know why they're freaking out, but this is when the big twist happened. Brendo Baggins from earlier, who warned them to stop what they're doing, he sells them out to the government. How far from here? At 25 kilometers, I can show you. So they head out to catch the Christians. They break into their secret base, but Roy is able to escape before they get there. There's an epic chase scene, he steals a car, so let's add a sin to the tally. And now we're right back at the beginning of the movie now. <laughs> Crazy, it came full circle. So they bring Roy out into the woods, they kill him, and then the movie ends. Seriously, that is how the movie ends. But then in the credits, they give a nice special shout out to their uh, their best buddy, Jesus Christ. Which is nice because I know Jesus worked really hard on this movie. I think he was actually in charge of like holding the boom mic the whole time. Cause you know, he has experience with holding his hands up for a while. Man, I don't even know where to begin with my like final thoughts. And I'm honestly, I'm not usually one to like shit on independent films because you know, making a movie isn't easy even with a huge budget right if you have a small budget it's even harder to make a good film i don't know man if you're gonna make a fucking anti-mask sci-fi christian movie because you're pissed that you can't go to restaurants anymore i don't know dude you're kind of asking to get made fun of and when the director and star of the movie starts an instagram caption about his girlfriend with finally 18 oh i don't feel bad at all fuck your movie dude it sucks add another a thousand sins based on the fact that this movie changed my mind about my all movies are good theory uh, and the fact that it's like making me strongly consider devil worship. I give 2025, the world enslaved by a virus, one out of 18 year old wives. Ooh. I'll see you in hell. Okay, now let's hear a word from our sponsor, ExpressVPN. Folks, if you weren't using ExpressVPN when you browse the internet on an unencrypted Wi-Fi network, you're playing a dangerous game. Hackers could- 